Dr. Dominique Reese here, owner of Reese Financial Services, where I am the chief financial coach and planner. I serve LA County and beyond. And today's Tip Tuesday is five differences between saving and investing you may not know. And I thought it was important to highlight the differences between saving and investing because we are currently in, the, in a campaign for saving and investing. So you will see a lot of content being distributed from Reese Financial Services around savings and investing. We have the free $1,000 Savings Club, uh, which is a club where we will save over $1,000 using small amounts every week. So we'll save small amounts of money every single solitary week, 52 weeks in a year. And at the end of the year, we will have over $1,000. The second campaign we're running is the Black Women's Investment Club. So that's where we're talking about investments. And the premise of that club is that it is a, a investment club for Black women leaders, professionals, and entrepreneurs. And we will save small amounts and get large gains. So again, the common thread here is using small amounts of money to work for us, to create financial capability, to create financial literacy, to create financial well-being. And small amounts over time create large gains. So the differences that I want to highlight today between saving and investing are important because I believe, one, that saving and investing happen on a spectrum, which is, well, it's this way, <laughs> which is reflected here. Savings need to be accumulated so that we can then invest them. So there's a spectrum upon which there is a readiness for investing. You know, sometimes people are really excited to invest, but we caution them not to do that if there isn't a certain amount of savings already put away, because with investing, there are different types of risks. So there's a spectrum. So the difference here, I'm going to highlight five differences between saving and investing that I think are highly important to anyone who's doing anything with their money and wants their money to work with them or, I mean, work for them um, after you've worked for it. So... First thing, accumulation versus earnings. When we're saving money, we're accumulating, right? The, it's open the account, put the money in the account, and let it accumulate. Put as much in there as you possibly can. Whereas with investing, it's earnings. It's I want this money to earn as much money as it possibly can. So again, going back to this spectrum, we eventually at some point want to start saving and then save enough to start investing. When we do that, we want the money that's being invested to create earnings. We don't want it to just accumulate. We want the earnings to accumulate, okay? First difference. Second difference, savings is about capital preservation, whereas investing is about capital appreciation. What are the differences here? These two words, preservation versus appreciation. When we're saving money, we want to preserve it. We want it to be safe. We don't want to put it at risk. We want it to be what we know it's going to be based on the amount we're contributing. Whereas with investing, we want that money to appreciate. <laughs> Excuse me. We want to make money off of the money. We want the money to grow. We want the money to expand. We want the money to increase. We do that here in savings as well based on what we contribute. But the difference here is that we want the money to create the appreciation. We don't want to have to contribute to it anymore. The money is now doing the work for itself to grow. See the differences here. With saving, there is low risk, which equates to low rewards in our investing world. Whereas in investing, there's low to high risk, which also means there's low to high reward. So we like to say no risk, no reward. High risk, high reward, low risk, low reward. What does that mean? Well, the more you put at risk here in investing, the higher your potential reward. That's somewhat of the logic as to why you would risk more. You would risk more because your gain is more. If you don't risk anything at all, then you can expect to not get anything at all. Low risk, low reward. So this translates into interest rates, right? When we're talking interest rates in these bank accounts, they're paying us nothing. You'd be better off sometimes having a safe because they're, they're making money off of you, but you have no uh, real potential of making any money off of your money sitting there. Low risk. It's just sitting there. You expect it to be there when you go get it. 
Here, however, there's low to media or low to high risk because we all have different investor profiles. So ultimately, if you are a risk taker, you're going to play on the higher end. And when you put that money out, you're hoping for something big in return. You're not doing it. You're not taking on all this risk just to get a low reward. You're taking on high risk to get a high reward. So there's correlation there. Low risk, low reward, high risk, high reward. Savings is all about low risk. So we can expect what? Low rewards. Whereas investing, it's low to high. So we expect low to high rewards. All right. Number three, key difference number three, erosion. Let's talk about that. Erosion versus compounding. So our money sits here in a savings account. It earns less than 1%. Meanwhile, inflation is 3%. Oh, so the money that's sitting in our account is actually worth less because of inflation. We're not even beating inflation with our return. Therefore, the money is eroding. We can't buy the same amount of goods with this money over time. It costs more. So quick example, let's say today a piece of gum is 25 cents. So we could get one piece of gum for 25 cents, right? Well, tomorrow that gum might go up to 35 cents. So now that dollar we use that dollar we use to buy the gum gets us less gum for more money. That's erosion. It's the buying power of our money is being decreased when it's just sitting in, the, in an account that is not beating at minimum inflation. Whereas in investing, we have compounding. Again, we're now talking about money making money. And so when the money does make the money, going back to the earnings, right? The money makes some earnings, those earnings are now included in the will of getting more money. So it's compounding. And that's happening all the time for the most part, right? Because investments go up and down. Um, but when we're on the up and we're getting the appreciation that we're seeking, that's what's happening. The money is being compounded. So ultimately, we want compounding. We don't want our money to erode. We could put away $1,000 and, and keep it there for a year. And based on interest rates, you may get paid $1,002 <laughs> at the end of it all. And for the most part, that $1,002 is going to buy you less over time than it did before because the money is just sitting there. There's nothing happening to it. Meanwhile, prices around us are steadily going up. And when that happens, our money buys us less for more. That's called erosion. Okay. Then the fifth difference, oh, you might not be able to see it. There it is. The fifth difference with savings, it's all about holding. As I just mentioned, money just sitting there. It's not doing anything. It's not working for you. They're just sitting like little soldiers just waiting, you know, waiting for their order. They're, they, they're not doing anything. Whereas over here, investing itself is predicated upon some activity. And that activity is the buying and selling of securities. There's activity there. There's something happening. Our, our soldiers aren't just sitting there. If you look at your, if every penny is a soldier, think about it that way. Every penny is a soldier. In investing, every soldier is going to work. There's something to do. There's some activity. Whereas in savings, they're just being held. Nothing's happening. So these are five key differences between saving and investing that I hope will, I hope will help you in understanding the journey from saving to investing, because it is a journey. And this is why it's a journey. We don't always sit and think about these dynamics because they're not necessarily taught to us. So that's why I'm teaching you right now, okay? Five differences between saving and investing based on these key characteristics will help you to understand strategy around your investing, around your saving, but also set some goals. Maybe the goal is I'm gonna save $500, and once I get it to a point where it's at 500, I'll take 200 and put it to work for me. You see that? So now you're on this spectrum and you're living in the whole spectrum. A lot of us get stuck here or even sometimes here. We're just saving. It's just being held. We, we're not putting any of it to work on this side of the spectrum. So it's really good to have these key differences to help you in your planning and your strategies so you know, okay, when I do set my goals, I'm not just setting savings goals. I'm setting specific investing goals. And that is the difference between saving and investing. One, there's a difference. And then two, 
Here's five more differences to help you understand the dynamics of saving and when you're doing that and the dynamics of investing and when you're doing that and then what you're getting in each phase. Okay, so I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to, uh, you know, hit me up. Reply in the comments, send me an email, uh, give me a call. You have contact information on the Mastermind Money page. And I will post the links for the $1,000 Savings Club, where you can join us and save every week for the next 50, 48 weeks. We save small amounts every week. And by the end of the year, this time next year, you will have over $1,000. You can also go pro in that challenge, which means you can double up or triple up your weekly contributions. And we have someone who's doing that in the challenge. They already have like 60 bucks saved, right? We're really, we're only like $6. <laughs> so that, that person is really doubling up. So that's the, uh, the savings club. And then I will also post the link for the Black Women's Investment Club. We are accepting applications for new members through January 31st. So you have about a week to check out the training. The training is absolutely free and it's only 30 minutes. So you set aside 30 minutes, you check out the training, you'll learn about investment clubs, and then you'll learn specifically why this particular investment club is different and unique. And if you are interested, you'll have instructions on what it means to apply to become a member of the Black Women's Investment Club. All right, so I'll post those links in case you're interested. Uh, feel free to hit me up if you have any questions, or if you have a topic that you would like for me to cover in a Tip Tuesday, please submit it. You can reach me at Dominique at ReeseFinancialServices.com, and I'll also post that in the comments. Thanks for tuning in. Peace.